So what I want you to, for the remainder of today, is set the stage for what we are going to do in the next week and a half. Um, so on Thursday, we are going to talk about something called the double slit interference. It's the simplest kind of wave interference that we'll look at in this class. And what that is, is it's a starting point to, to talk about something called the diffraction later um, next week. And the reason diffraction is useful is it tells you about some fundamental limits to the performance of optical instruments. So for example, I, I don't know, anyone here know anything about astronomy? Yes, no, kind of, maybe. Um, do you know how big the, tele, the telescopes that the professional astronomers use are? Pretty big, like how, like meter, 10 meters, 100 meters? 10 meters for optical uh, telescopes. So when you look at the, the question you might ask, you might wonder, so why do you make them so big? The, well, the focal length, you can have a long focal length with a really tiny mirror, or a very short focal length with also tiny mirror. Oh, I, I was about just... Like why is the mirror itself so big? Oh. Yeah. So there's, so one of them is the, with a bigger mirror, you catch more of the light. It's the second thing that we'll get to in about two weeks, which is called the Rayleigh criterion. It, uh, it establishes something called the diffraction limited resolution limit of a telescope. So this is going to be a common recurring feature in physics 4C. So in earlier physics classes, we had this attitude that ideally things could be perfect. Ideally, you could have a frictionless surface. Ideally, your measurements could be arbitrarily precise, right? Ideally, we never exclude that. In physics 4C, we are going to start talking about fundamental limits, as in uh, some limitation to what we can do that laws of nature itself says that we cannot do. So when you have a certain size of a telescope, there's a fundamental limit to how small an angular distance that telescope can resolve. That's determined by something called the Rayleigh criterion. We're gonna talk about it in about two weeks. So I just want you to put that there as a reason why we are going through all this math and interference and stuff. It does have a practical application to it. It um, allows you to calculate those fundamental limits to uh, ideal, how ideal instruments work.